in terms of the city, it costs us about £270 million pound to run adult social care and children's social care. So £270 up, you know, well over a quarter of a billion pound. Um, and the, you know, that, that figure is what we get uh, in total through business rates and, and council tax. So you can see the challenge that we have in protecting and running other, other services. Okay, so just a couple of other things as well. We look at, you know, um, Sefton, thirty-one uh, percent. Uh, if we had it's the same mix of housing, if we had the same mix of housing uh, as Sefton have, we we have fifty-five uh, million pound more. We gave out figures the other day about fifty percent of Liverpool's housing stock being in uh, the social rented sector. Um, and it was challenged, well, it's less than that, but the, the properties, private rented sector, that in receipt of uh, council tax and housing revenue support from us in England and to stay in there is topped up and subsidised by us. And that's where really, we got the figure of 50% uh, of uh, social housing um, because it's important to remember that we actually support and help people. Uh, to stay in the private rented sector, uh, around about three hundred million pound in uh, uh, housing benefits, um, and a big chunk, and it's around about four million pound in uh, discretionary housing. You'll see the two point nine percent increase in council tax, which is consistent with what we said uh, we would put it up by uh, when we set the budget uh, three years ago or well, two years ago. This is the final year. And if you recall, we also had the 2% uh, adult social care preset, which we put into the budget, which is now in the base budget because we front loaded it, so it enabled us to actually get more money to support adult social care. But 2% uh, of that 2.9 uh, is going on uh, wages, in terms of the wage claim for uh, our staff um, who we employ, and, and rightly so. So it gives us around about 1% uh, to spend or pay on other things. And as I said, that still doesn't help us solve the £21 million that we've uh, got to find. A third of our council tax payers, so a third, one in three people who live in properties uh, in the city, receive support from the council, subsidised through housing benefits or discretionary housing. And one in four of those are actually in work, low pay, poverty, which means that we still subsidise them, even though they're in work. And just to remind you, there's only one the city, Bristol, that supports especially housing in the way that we do. And they get 38 million pounds more a year in council tax than we do. So take pride in the fact that we help the poorest in our city. A couple of things just basically on where we're going to be in the 2020 and the challenges that we face. And the fair funding review we keep getting told it'll be ready in another three weeks, six weeks, four weeks, two months. Um, and we've just recently been told you're going to get it in about four to six weeks. Well, of course, with Brexit and everything that's going on, we still haven't heard. But the serious um, concerns uh, from me and other core city leaders, because you'll hear uh, that all he's talking about uh, creating the rate support grant and taking away the deprivation element of it. So in other words, where we've been able to, uh, as a result of the problems that we face, get some more funding coming in, uh, it looks like the Tories are considering when they reduce the rate support grant on the basis of taking away deprivation, which will impact on the poorest cities more than the richest, and we all know uh, about that. And of course, there are still major problems for us with adult social care and children's social care. So we've actually, despite setting aside around about seven million to pay extra in children's social care, we've actually put in seven million pounds that enables us to take out more staff because our staff can't cope with the increasing workloads that they face and we've been able to manage to and gave instructions to the chief executive and the director of children's services to recruit more staff and I think it's 120 or 
160 uh, uh, staff B, staff that will be taking on, um, and obviously we started that recruitment uh, process. Of course, you know, Brexit is, is a huge uh, unknown in terms of what it's going to mean uh, for the city, uh, and I can't predict that. Um, what I can predict is that you know, whilst Brexit is going on, there is nobody talking to cities or engaging with cities about how they change or you know, reshape policy areas. And it's been like that for about two and a half years, as you know, since we made the decision. But what is absolutely clear, I think if we have a no-deal Brexit, then there's going to be serious problems that face it all. Um, what we are trying to do is make sure that we support our NHS with uh, chief executives having conversations uh, with agencies and major players in the city uh, about the resilience strategy about what we can do, those talks are ongoing. We're also talking to businesses about what we can do to support them. And of course, the, the most important thing is a cosmopolitan city. Uh, we want to make sure that people feel welcome here, including members of our own staff uh, who are EU citizens and will continue uh, to make that absolutely clear to them. When I uh, talk about what we've done as, as an administration since 2010, I've talked about setting out our priorities and making it absolutely clear what we're about, what our strategy is, and how we are to go about that. And the two things that we talk about is about protecting the most vulnerable and supporting the most vulnerable in our city. And again, I don't think there's any city in the country that does it any better than what we do in our city. And that's despite the fundamental challenges that we face. It, I had a uh, read just a little bit of a, uh, a, a, a report on a conversation about the chairs will fly over. I went to see uh, the Minister Chris Graham um, about uh, a week ago um, with one member of staff and, and we talked to him about the cost of taking down chairs will fly over and then doing the work underneath and doing some work around it. We said it'll probably cost us about 11 million, about 6.6 and a half million to decommission chairs or flyover. So if we want to replace it, it costs about 60 million. To which Mr. Gray replied to me and said, well, I think if uh, we take this to Treasury, Joe, he said they will probably tell you to use your reserves. Uh, so I said to him, and I gave him a copy of our budget, and I said, your dear friend and mine, Mr. Epiphels, told me to use our reserves. And for the last seven years, we've been paying out in social care 13 million pounds out of our budget in reserves. So we've got one on left. I said, so if you don't support us, what I'll do is I'll leave it standing and I'll put a big banner on it saying, as a result of the Tory cuts, we can't take this down. So we see the I hope for the blue job, and you know I'll do anything to help the city. So uh, let's see if we get the money to take it down. But it was uh, spending our reserves, which if you see in the budget statement, it shows you that we are at the minimum basic, so it's a maximum area of what we can keep the reserves. The other reserves that we've got are earmarked reserves, which means that we can't use them because they don't belong to us, which we could use them, but we can't. So um, this is just. Because I, I keep reminding you about us protecting and that twin track of folks who grow the economy, but also about using that to protect people. It's just important that we, uh, we look at what we do spend and how we spend it. It comes back to our challenge anybody in the city to compare us to any other city across the country and look at what we spend and what we do in comparison. 57 million pounds. Uh, we spend uh, on, on support and vulnerable people in, in our city. The discretionary housing payments, the crisis payments, the benefits maximisation, the hardship fund, council tax support. And again, you know, Mark Newkowitz, Jay uh, Corbett, uh, making sure that those in need of support uh, through our benefits maximisation team make sure uh, that we get that. And there are many other things that we do using the neighbourhood funds, the nurse fund, uh, to keep in poverty, all kinds of things that we do to support people. 
Then you go and say, it's worth building on board with us 750 beds we support and pay for for hospitals every night. 7,000 uh, families uh, are helped by us every single year in terms of staying in their accommodation, staying in their houses, praised by Public Health England and also by Shelter. Uh, so again, we should be proud of that. Library House, the only council shelter in the country that's open to everybody everybody, no matter where you come from, and it's open every single night. And we look at our figures in terms of rough sleepers, that's not being complacent or saying we've done enough, because we haven't. That's why we're funding and paying for a new library house, even bigger, to support and make sure that we support and protect uh, homeless people, people on the streets, people with drug and addiction problems, to try and give them hope, to try and give them hope that we're not just giving them a roof over their head every night, but we're engaging with them, helping them to come off addiction and give them hope and a job and where to do so that we can turn their lives around. And that's, if you look at the 160 social workers uh, that were engaged, I just mentioned that. And the reason why I did that as well because we talked to staff, uh, Steve, Reddy and Barry, myself, we went and spoke to staff as we do. And it was really heartbreaking to listen to the caseloads as a social worker yourself. I know what it's like when you've got you know, the demands and the pressures on you and you're taking away home. You know, some, some people were distraught and they're taking away home and working extremely hard. So it's right that we address that and recruit and employ 160 uh, new, new, uh, new social workers. You can see 15,000 people we help uh, with adult social care. We're, we're building three new dementia hubs. Grandly, you know, look, look, look at Grandly, look at uh, all the dementia hubs that we've built, built and spoken to Ros before Ros and we're grateful for everything that you did during your time uh, with all our dementia hubs and all the way that we go proud of the fact when the LGA come, a woman being officer from the LGA said, I've never seen a city do more of what you're doing to support dementia. Uh, in that we're building three more. Uh, so that'll help the other 180 people and also creating some jobs uh, in there. And then continue, you know, protecting the vulnerable and protecting our services. And when we have a look at, you know, 450 libraries across the country closed, none here in our city. Similar with children's centres, 350 none here in our city. And then, you know, look, at, at, as, as I said, how we've used our reserves. We've used our reserves to support those most in need and the vulnerable in this city. And then coming back to the point around how we transform our city and how we change our city. It's only by doing things, invest to aim, sensible socialism, that we're able to buy into services, bring services back in house, transform how we do things and use inclusive growth to make sure that we transform communities and we transform and regenerate communities and create jobs. That's what we're doing up and down the city of Liverpool. And if you look at um, you know, and what we do, if you look at those things that we've showed you on the slide previously, but look at what we're, we've done since Ed's Lane. Ed's Lane, don't forget about it. Look, in legal disputes between this council uh, and uh, Dairons. We've unlocked that. And at this juncture, we've only just over a third built on X Lane with much more, with much more to come. We're getting £3 million a year now in business rates revenue than we did before. £3 million that has enabled us to actually protect services. £7 million in the business rates from business rates in speed. You look at the ideal modular homes factory, going from 60 staff to 240 staff. Sakinas pharmaceutical company in street, again supported by the city, supported by SIF funded with quality top jobs, all bringing in £7 million a year. Money that we're using to subsidise and pay for the services to protect people. Socialism, sensible socialism in action. Developing our economy, growing our economy, creating jobs and protecting people. That's what we're doing at this administration.
And then if you look at the number of houses since 2010, when we have £127 million taken away from us in housing and market renewal, and yes, it's wonderful that Homes England have moved into Man Island and the gave us £10 million for alleviation work. Never refuse anything other than loans we dad said to me. And that's why we welcome that money. But I reminded them that they took away £127 million in housing market renewal from us in the first instance. And what we've done in terms of housing in this city is to no small thanks to them. But if you look at those figures, if you look at that 11,000 new homes from 2010 through to today, bringing in £9 million pounds in revenue that we didn't have before. So if you look at those figures, that in total is around £20 million pounds that we're now bringing in, which we didn't because of our invest to win strategy. So if you look at uh, the city centre population, 180, 181% uh, people have moved in up by 25,000. And you know, we've just had the report from sensitive cities at the bid saying we haven't got enough office space in our city. And that's why we're developing in Palmar on the old exchange railway station. And we're going to bring in quality jobs, top quality jobs for your children and your grandchildren and for this city's future. And we'll also develop better open space than exists there now. That's what we have to deal with. That's what we have to face. We have to face up to the problems that we have in this city. And we have to challenge them by doing innovative things and protecting, as well at the same time, our green spaces, which is what we do. If you look at the invest to aim, just in terms of what I remember, you know, the criticisms that we had about our investor aid strategy from our friends on the benches here about uh, Fitch Farm, uh, £800,000 a year it brings in now, probably around about uh, 3.2 million that we've had from Fitch Farm in rent. QNR building now paid for 11 million we got from Municipal Building, the money that we save on the Lending House and the rent. Uh, that, that we get, the income that we get uh, from that. We bought um, the QNR building, it's now almost paid for and paid back with two, just under £2 million in rent roll and it's now estimated to be in excess of £30 million. The apprenticeships and all the things that we've done have been done with our support, using funding and money, working with others and working with the private sector to create that. Because investor way doesn't just mean about getting the retail in money. And that's why our investor way strategy in all the schools we built make sure that the local supply is used and we've got apprenticeships and jobs being uh, created. Just talking about uh, another example of how we can invest away. If you look at crops of uh, Park, because of uh, the challenges that we face in terms of the budget and the cuts that we have to make, we were looking at making £60,000 cuts in, in Crofton Park. But because we invested in uh, CBBs, uh, the BBC comes to Crofton Park, the money that we made, we're not making any cuts in Crofton Park, so the £60,000 going back to use. And that's another way of doing invest to win. It's about investing and making sure that we bring in money and we support people. And then, Let's just have a look at that those figures. Just, just have a look at those figures and, and you know, just take a picture of them or refresh it or send the slides. The level of investment in this city is second to no other city in the country. Look at it, there's 13 billion pound level of investment that's coming in in construction schemes right across the city. If we have one of them, Let's just take Paddington Builds along part of the failed building schools of the future where we took a school, we actually took a school of artificial glass and instead of developing on that site, we put them in a, a, a part of the city where we wanted to uh, bring back regeneration. And we've got 30 acres of prime land 
with the Rutherford Cancer Centre, the Catholic School of Language, working with um, the Royal uh, Liverpool Hospital, but working with also the University of Liverpool. You look at the Royal College of Physicians, thousands of jobs for our city, thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds worth of new income and business rates, millions every single year as a result of what we're doing, and thousands of jobs being created on that site. We've done that, we've developed that, despite austerity. So what we're planning for is not just to manage what we've done over the last nine years, but we're looking ahead and looking forward to the next nine years, about what we leave as a legacy for our city moving forward. And you know, when I look at, I was talking about the Garden Festival site, and it comes back to how do you want to see the glass or fall or off empty, or how do you want to portray the administration. Lime Tree had the Garden Festival site for the last 30 years, doing nothing with it, boarded up, nobody could go on it. You couldn't go on it, it was boarded up, it was full of trolleys, cars, derelict. We've invested in that site, we've opened it up, we bought it for five million, then we invested and opened it up, and now we're going to build around 1,500 houses. It's going to bring jobs, literally thousands of jobs, we're going to talk to leisure companies and we're building houses on it. And there'll be 43 acres of new land that people can access and go on to that they didn't have before because it went on to Langtree. Now we own it, now it's a park, and now we're going to develop it and also protect that park and that green space. 43 acres of grasslands that we're protecting and keeping that belong to a private developer. Now isn't that something to celebrate? That's what we should all protect the green space and put the back into the east green space. That's what we should be telling people out there in the city instead of bits of gardens. Okay, and then if we look at the schools, because I'm not going to let this go past without reminding people of the 16 brand new schools that this city council has built over the last five, six years. Schools, secondary schools, primary schools, 2,000 construction jobs, 200 apprenticeships, 62% of that money spent with local companies that kept them afloat and kept them operating in difficult times caused by the Tory government. That's what we've done as a Labour administration with sensible socialism. And look, 14,000 kids in brand new schools using brand new facilities that we didn't have before because the Tories took £350 million away from us in building schools for the future. But we managed, and not one PFI missed again. Not one PFI. <laughs> and I just talked to you about Highlands and Birds. You know, I'm not going to, but I am actually, I am going to. My vision. My vision, me, I wrote that. Officers told us to build a school on that site, and I said no. Let's look at the new technology, let's look at the new Royal Hospital, let's look at the university, let's look at the money that's gone into the school of tropical medicine, let's look at the knowledge quarter, and let's develop on it. And that's exactly what we're doing. It's going to be probably one of the most important projects in the UK, and certainly in Europe. And you know when we link it? with Bramley Moore, and we link it with Central Docks, and we link it with Nelson Dock, and we link it with our cruise line at Taylor, and we link it with the Isle of Man Bay, and then we link King's Dock with the jobs that we're creating in King's Dock, thousands of new jobs, and then we look at the Garden Festival site. Five miles down our river, we're transforming this city. Five miles. Nobody in Europe will be seeing developments on that scale with billions of pounds, with thousands of jobs, and it's happening as a result of the Labour administration. <laughs> and there it is, five miles of water from, from one end of the dock to the others. And we've worked with HCA, with the Homes England and others to take back control of that land. That's why there's more way to do what they're saying. The little woods building will develop the knowledge quarter around Mount Pleasant and what we're calling uh, the, the new 
two of the central of the city, Lincoln to Paddington and Burns, are all in an old life with hundreds of millions of pounds worth of developments. And those major investment opportunities are going to provide income for our city moving forward, post Brexit, and hopefully even when we get a Labour government, which hopefully will be soon. I just wanted to leave that, and if anybody was talking about uh, green space, just look at that. That's southern grasslands, 47 acres of accessible green space. There is more green space in this city now than there has ever been. More green space in this city now than there has ever been. And we are in this administration that governs for the whole city. The poorest areas of the south and the north and the south of the affluent areas of the south. We govern for everybody and we'll do the right thing. And that's why we will protect that 47 acres and make it open grassland on the prime waterfront of our city. And we'll continue uh, to do more of that. Bradley Wardock, as I said, look at it. Catalyst for five and a half billion. We had uh, Mr. Kemp. Um, uh, in, in his blog, talk about the cost to the council. Um, well, I was, I, was, I, was, I was trying to get all sorts of um, evangelical here, uh, and um, uh, simply, uh, and Christian money. But I was at church uh, with Mr. Kemp on, on Sunday, and um, there was a, um, a quote from the Gospel um, read by the bishop, uh, who talked about the parable that Jesus gave. And the parable was something along the lines of if you want to take the splinter from your brother's eye, remove the plank from your own hypocrite. That's the book, that was the parable from Jesus. If ever something summed him up by Christ. You know, here's a man whose administration has left us eleven million pounds in PFI payments every single year before I even sit down to manage the budget. We have to find eleven million pounds. And he sits there pontificating whether it's about St. John's Father, which has got 50 years we're tied into, and over a hundred thousand pounds a year, and he pontificates about what we're doing. And you look at those figures of what we're bringing in, in terms of the economy and the jobs we've created. 31,000 jobs, 11,000 new houses, 16 new schools, services protected, leisure, libraries, children's centres. Take the flag out of your eye. I know what I do with the flag, but there you go. The cruise line is terminal. Look at that, the cruise line is terminal and the Iron Man. Uh, that's going to be next to it. Uh, with 123 million pounds of roads, thanks to the sit and the, the combined authority going in. A really fantastic opportunity, again, that's going to bring in huge benefits, huge tourism, huge infrastructure improvements, but also, more importantly, business rates and jobs. 500 new jobs, 3,600. Remember when we took control in 2010, we used to get two cruise liners a year coming to the lights and dock next to the scrapyard. Now, look at it now. Yeah, 87 cruise ships last year, and we hope to top that. We will top it when we have our cruise liner, which is starting to wave down. And there's Palmar. Palmar at the back, where Exchange Street Station used to be. I used to collect the papers in the morning and go off delivering across town. That's Palmar. That's where we're building. And as I said, the reason why we're doing it is because our city can't stand still. Every day, I fight to bring the investments into this city. Every single day, we've got legal companies like Moorcross, but other big companies like Taylor Wesson have moved into our city. And that's because we lobby them and tell them about what we're doing in our city. And we also lobby them and tell them about grade day office space that we're going to have and the facilities that they need. And if we don't have them, because we were competing against Leeds and Birmingham, if we didn't have them, that's where they'd go. So the bottom line is, we've got to have those spaces, we've got to have those facilities, and we've got to have that space. Um, I keep saying to uh, everybody, and I have done uh, since uh, 2010, I've always said that we have serious problems. 
um, and what moulds what's around the corner in, in 2020. I only say that because I don't know. And we have to wait up to November or December to see finally what the government's saying. But it's always about young moulds and it's also about the known unknowns. We know that. We know the challenges we face, but we don't know how government's going to do the fair fund formula. We don't know about Brexit and what's going to happen. But I keep telling people that the opportunities that this city has outweigh the challenges that we have. We are a city that is open for business. There's a vibrancy about our city. There's a real buzz. There's a real excitement about our city. And our best days lie ahead of it. And I know if we stick solidly, reasonably, to our approach to grow our economy, regenerate our communities, we can actually support the poorest during difficult times because that's what we're proud of as a socialist administration delivering for this city.
getting more money for councils and things, but also holding the impact from those residents who are long suffering because those are often the conduits for crime down and devaluing the neighbouring properties. The second question, I know she's going to start saying that we are here for the whole so city. Um, I don't think it's unfair to say one of the disappointments has uh, five years the mayor gave us a statement saying that uh, uh, there was going to be a breakthrough with the culture site and this long term Derek site uh, would be subject to a major redevelopment. Is there any plans to kick start that? Uh, subject to clearly the problems of the previous or current owners. Um, because it is not just an impact on the wall, it has a clear visible impact that anyone visiting the city to the grounds to see such a major site looking ceremony bound. I have to also say I'm very, very concerned the current state of the site is actually quite dangerous because the answer is going to go to school. It could be injured now the site is not open. I have been in touch with the city building service, constructed and understand we have difficult tracing the owners. Uh, which is quite unusual. So I'd be grateful for those two counties in there um, the providing the comments either today or uh, following the show. Yeah. 